Hello, and welcome to the second part of the Fundamentals of Cold Orbit. In this part, we'll cover orbit insertions, a topic that doesn't get much coverage, but which is an essential part of successful AX combat. So what do we mean by orbit insertions? Orbit insertion is the process by which you initiate your orbit right before commencing an attack run, and although it can vary based on the speed and manoeuvrability of your ship, the fact that interceptor movement is quite linear means we can create a pattern that we can adapt to any ship that will set up an attack run that will safely guarantee consistent results, the initial damage that we do to the interceptor. This process consists of three elements. Initiation. We always want to initiate our entry in a direction that we choose and out of range of the interceptor's main cannon. Adjustment. Once we've started our entry, we look to correct and improve it by adjusting the speed of our ship and by using our thrusters to make the interceptor move across our screen in the direction that we want it to. In the demonstrations that we'll show you later, you'll see that we've used roll to make the interceptor move horizontally across our screen. And lastly, maintaining. This is the process of controlling and balancing our range and relative vector to the interceptor that allows us to maintain our orbit with our point of aim where it needs to be until the interceptor goes to rearm. Why is proper orbit insertion important? Contrary to what most people might think, interceptors don't only reload when they've fired all their salvos. Their attack runs are also subject to internal timers that vary in length between the different types of interceptor, with Cyclops taking roughly 31 seconds between the first shot and rearm, Basilisk taking roughly 26 seconds, Medusa roughly 25 seconds, and Hydra roughly 22 seconds. These timers also serve to complicate attack runs because when an interceptor rearms, you need to re establish your orbit. So a successful, repeatable, and fast insertion will always give you more time on target before a reload, and as such, a quicker and more efficient fight. Now, as in our last video, we'll first show you a demonstration of orbit insertions using three different ships, each with different handling characteristics. Then we'll break these insertions down into smaller chunks, focusing on key frames. The first ship we'll cover is everyone's favourite, the Alliance Chieftain. The Chieftain is rightly one of the meta AX ships because, despite having a very strong hull, it retains excellent speed and agility which means we don't need to rely on boost or worry about the swarm ever hitting us because we can exploit that speed and agility. The first method we'll demonstrate is a diagonal orbit insertion. This allows us to group up the swarm in the corner of our screen and lets us clearly see where it is as we insert into an orbit. First, let's watch this method of insertion in action. Now let's break it down into a few steps. We start the initiation out of range of the interceptor's main cannon with a diagonal motion. Under attack. Then for the adjustment, we use roll to make the interceptor move across our screen in a somewhat horizontal direction and forward thrust to gently slow down and allow the interceptor to come into range. Once the interceptor approaches within about two kilometers, we switch to Gauss and prepare to fire. But as part of maintaining our orbit, we need to constantly use our thrusters to keep the interceptor in optimal range. Imagine trying to balance on a pole. Continuing to maintain our orbit, once we start firing, we now change our movement using roll so that it almost becomes a spiral. We're doing this to prevent our orbit from decaying as the interceptor slows down and turns more tightly. Another method of orbit insertion for the Chieftain is the boost vertical insertion. This approach is ideal for fighting multiple interceptors at the same time because the much higher speed you'll be orbiting at allows you to more easily maneuver between other interceptors while focusing on the one you want to shoot. We'll demonstrate with a clip from the best multi-interceptor combat pilot, Commander Ewan.
first you initiate your orbit by thrusting downwards. Then you use your first beast to put you in range of the interceptor you're targeting. The moment you start losing range after your first beast, you maintain it by boosting a second time to stabilise the orbit and prevent you from drifting out of range. You then continue using boost as necessary to maintain your range. This wide vertical boost motion also lets you easily group the swarms in one place right above your head, preventing them from posing any threat. Thanks to Commander Ewan for letting us share his clip and demonstrating his method of orbit insertion. And we've included a link to his YouTube channel in the description below. Let's move on to the Crate Mark II, another fan favourite because of its greater DPS and flexibility, but a ship that's much harder to fly than the Chief and thus is more suited to advanced pilots. As with the Chieftain, we'll demonstrate two methods of orbit insertion with the Crate Mark II. The rolling insertion, a less aggressive approach that relies on using roll to overcome the crate's weak lateral maneuverability, and the 1 2 boost insertion, a more aggressive approach that puts us into optimal range faster and lets us deal damage sooner. Let's start with the rolling insertion. As with the Chieftain, we begin by initiating a diagonal motion, so the swarm is clearly visible on our screen, making it easier to manage. Adjusting our speed to allow the interceptor to catch up to us, neither too quickly that it flies by, nor too slowly that it goes to rearm by the time we get into range. Then we gently use roll, so the Hydra is moving in a somewhat horizontal direction across our screen. Finally, as our slow yaw rate prevents our point of aim from staying on the Hydra, we add just a little bit of roll, then use pitch up to keep our point of aim. Once we've added enough roll, we roll in the opposite direction to cancel it, but because the Hydra is constantly on the move, we need to constantly adjust our roll angle to prevent our orbit from decaying. Now the 1-2 boost insertion. We begin by using downwards thrust to change our vector, adjusting our speed relative to the interceptor so that it doesn't catch us too quickly. As the interceptor comes within 2.5 kilometers, we drop a heatsink, switch to Gauss and use the first boost to put us into the optimal range of the interceptor, and then just as we start to swing out of range, we initiate a second boost to stabilize our orbit. Remember, one to insert, two to stabilise. After that, either boost or dank, depending on the situation. Finally, we'll demonstrate orbit insertion using the community's most hated and simultaneously most loved ship, the Ferdelance. The Ferdelance's amazing speed and agility allows for very tight and aggressive insertions, resulting in very good early damage. The insertion is similar to what we did with the Alliance Chieftain, with the exception of not needing to rely on roll so much because of its speed, 
which helps prevent orbit decay. Now it can be difficult to determine how much initial damage you should expect to do with a good insertion because a lot of it depends on your loadout. In our demo we use four medium gauss from the Gatling Macro. Let's watch the clip and then break it down. We initiate using the same diagonal motion we used for the non-boosting Chief and Crate Mark II insertions. Then we use rolls to make the interceptor move across our screen in a somewhat horizontal direction and our thrusters to maintain our orbit. Finally, with the interceptor in close range, we gently control our roll to keep it moving horizontally across our screen. We don't need to mimic the spiral motion of the Chieftain because of the third lance's raw speed. The three most common mistakes commanders make when trying to insert into an orbit are number one orbiting the interceptor while using thermal weapons, then starting the attack run when its shields drop. Now this isn't necessarily a bad thing once you know what you're doing, and is required in ships that can't achieve and maintain distance from an interceptor, but it does affect the efficiency of the entire attack run because it stops you from having control of what happens next. Instead, we recommend beaming the shield while in a straight line reverse outside of the interceptor's 3km attack range before initiating your insertion. Number 2. Initiating an orbit by slowing down too aggressively. Once you know what you're doing, this isn't necessarily a bad approach, but if you don't, you'll end up drifting out of range as the interceptor can't slow down fast enough to keep up with you. Number three. The last and by far the most common mistake we see is commanders continuing with attack runs when in unstable orbits. These runs invariably end up with the commander swinging in and out of range of the interceptor, making it incredibly difficult, if not impossible, to be successful. Now we can't stress this enough, but if you don't feel the insertion has gone well and you're not in a stable and controllable orbit, just boost away and start again. So there you have it, initiation, adjustment and maintaining, the key elements to successful orbit insertion and with it, more successful attack runs. As we said at the beginning of this video, there's more than one way to perform an insertion, but as long as you focus on these key elements, you can adapt your approach to fit not only your style, but also the ship that you fly.